Hey guys, it's Jordy here from Cinecam.net and welcome back to Copycat Friday, the weekly series in which we try to recreate visual effects from famous films and music videos and sometimes, you know, TikTok effects like we're doing today because we were inspired by this throwing hoodie on a table and then a, a person pops out of that effect. It's really cool and it's a big trend on TikTok at the moment so we thought let's recreate that, break it down and show you guys step by step on how you can do that as well. So let's get started. Like Jordy just said, we are going to do this hoodie smash effect which is quite popular on TikTok. And to be honest, it's a fun and cool effect, so it's perfect for us to recreate. Now of course you can tell this isn't the most difficult effect. And hey, it doesn't always need to be rocket science. So sit back, enjoy, learn some stuff and maybe recreate this for your own TikTok account. And if you do so, tag us. We would love to see what you make. But now, let's do a quick test before we do the real shoot. Focus, Timo, focus. Into the thick of it. <gasps> this was actually my raincoat when I was younger. You could see I was already fashionable. It was a fashion statement. Oh, now we're walking. So what did we just learn from our test phase? Well, the first thing is to pay attention to the lighting in your scene. If you're shooting in a smaller room just like we did, you will notice you have a lot of shadows on the wall and blending those together can be really hard. So to avoid that, just move to a bigger room or you can even go outside, which will completely eliminate shadows. The second thing you need to pay attention to is that you move as fast as possible away from the table when you hit the hoodie on it. And this is because your second actor will pop up and you want to avoid standing behind him, making your life way more difficult in post-production by masking a lot. And the third thing you want to pay attention to is your acting. Since you're throwing the hoodie with quite a force on the table, you want to try to match the speed of that hoodie when coming back up. Otherwise, it will look quite funky as you can see in our example. So we have this water balloon. Jordy's shooting outside. Let's throw this. Jordy! <laughs> So after going through all the trouble of catching a water balloon, I thought by myself, we could have just used a stock clips off from our sponsor, Storyblocks. Now this is not just any library, guys. Storyblocks is filled with millions of video assets and every day new video assets are being added as well. We use it on almost a daily basis whenever we're missing shots. We can just use stock clips, which come in 4K high quality, by the way. There are 3D animations, which are great to make small videos to deliver to a client. You can also find overlay effects, green screen videos, After Effects templates, Premiere Pro preset packs and so much more. It is really incredible and I can recommend it to any creative because there is just a single price per year which allows you to download unlimited of these video assets without additional fees. So go check it out guys and create stunning logo reveals or slideshows or other visual effects. It is really awesome. You can click the first link in the description down below to learn all about it. Go check it out guys right now. Go. I'm gonna clean myself now. Oh, it's broken. <laughs> Always aim your lights before putting them in the sky. Especially if they're this heavy. I'm good at nailing stuff. Alright guys, you're gonna need a lot of hoodies or jackets, anything with a cap on the back. Is it called a cap? We call it a cap. A cap. <laughs> I, I understood that reference. And that's basically it. We can start now with one sweater or hoodie. Let's start with the blue one. Now here's what you have to do guys. You wear one sweater with the cap on and you hold another sweater in your hand. Then you just smash it to one side of the table. Make sure that it drops off. Then you're just going to take off your first sweater. Then put on the sweater that you just like thrown into the table. You take a new sweater 
or you can also pick it up afterwards. What the best? What's the best? You can choose, but you need to keep your cap on. Oh yeah, you keep, 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 keep the cap on. <laughs> so you keep the cap on, then you uh, lay down, like right here, and then you pretend like coming up, bounce back up, and you find something else like a different sweater. You throw it on the other side of the table, smash, it falls off. Then you uh, take off that sweater. You get it, guys? And this goes in the loop. Then you take the second one, you throw it out here, and you go up, and it's too good to do. Egg me in the mirror, it's a moment. You can't sit on them, but it's so So that explanation of Jordi was correct. But you have to keep in mind that you shoot really wide so you can add an extra shake in post production. And if you want to loop, you need to start laying on the table with a certain sweater. For instance, I'm starting with this one. You go up, then you do your whole sequence of smashing. And when you end your sequence, you need to end with smashing this in the same side as you started. And then you loop it. That's it. What he says. <laughs> We have everything that we need, so now we can start with creating the cool hoodie smash effect. And before we start, I want to say that you can do this entirely inside of Premiere Pro, but we decided to do this in After Effects just because we have more control over the masking. And we can use the rotoscope function if needed. So with that out of the way, let's kick off After Effects. First thing we're going to do is place our very long clip in a new composition. Then we looked for the starting point where Jordi is looking around. Here we made a cut. Now we deleted everything left of the cut and placed our clip in the beginning of the timeline. Next we're going to look for a hoodie impact on the table. Here we can place a marker by hitting the asterisk key on our keyboard. You know, the little key starting on the right of your keyboard. Then we go a little further in time and let's say after one second we make a cut again. Now we look for the point where our second talent has his hoodie on and jumps up from the table. Here we made a cut and removed everything left from that cut. Then we took our clip and aligned it with our previous marker. And if we play this now, we already have a transition between the two shots. However, we still need to do this process for several more hits and jumps. So we just repeated every previous step, making cuts and transitions between every hoodie hit and talent jump. And once we have all the transitions, it's time for some extreme masking. Extreme masking. First, we are going to start with the clip where the new talent jumps up. On this clip, we are going to single out our talent for 5 to 10 frames. So again, make a cut. We are doing this because our talent comes in front of our first talent, and that's why he needs to be masked out. Of course, we can easily do this with the rotoscope tool. We just select the roto brush and double click on the layer of the second talent. And then, we just single him out. Next up, we took the clip right from the cut and dragged it out to the left, again aligning it with the marker. On this clip, we are going to add a rough mask around the left part of the footage. This will again only show our second talent. Then, over time, we animated this mask to open up to the right, following our first talent who is walking off the screen. Then we looked if the swing of our second talent crossed with the first talent. Here we need to place our first talent back in front of everything, covering up the swinging arm. So we took the clip of Jordi, our first talent, and duplicated that on top of everything then made the duplicate shorter, only spanning over the period where we need to cover up the swing. And again, we are going to rotoscope Jordi out, only placing him in front of the rest. And that's it. One last thing, if we want to loop everything, then we need to take our first clip and duplicate that to the end of our timeline. Of course, we dragged that clip out to the left, but we also made it end on the same point it previously began. So now we have a clip where Jordi is laying on the table and ends where Jordi is looking around. And next, we just need to do all the masking steps to stitch it all together. And once you have done all the masking and whatever else you added, it's time to do some extra shake. So pre-compose everything and look for the first hoodie hit to add a shake. But we want to animate that shake, so it comes in and out. First we created a null object and added two slider effects to it. Name one slider frequency and the other one amount. 
Now we opened up the position property of the precom player by hitting the P key on our keyboard. Then we alt clicked on the stopwatch and typed in the wiggle expression. But instead of numbers we're going to parent it to our sliders. So in our expression we first parented the frequency slider, then added the comma and parented the amount slider. And now we can simply animate our sliders to add some shake. Easy as that and that's it. And that was it guys, hope you enjoyed the video, learned something new and if you decide to make this really cool TikTok effect as well, definitely make sure to publish it on the interwebs and tag us so that we can see it as well. Thank you so much for watching, thank you Storyblocks for your support and as always, stay creative. That was a transition. Dude, hold on guys, we're actually considering doing a Cinecom travel where we can meet up and create really cool videos together. But before we're going to prepare all of that, we need some more information. So if you're interested in doing that with us, take this survey. You can find the link in the description down below. It really helps us. So uh, I hope to see you there, anywhere in the world.